Everybody's saying the right thing. Now, it's just time to put it to work. What's good, people? It's your boy, Mr. Rome. Cowboys fan talk right back. Like I never left. What's up with y'all, man? Happy Friday. You're probably wondering, CFT. CFT, why are you smiling? After what happened last week, first and foremost, my health is doing better. I'm feeling better. Shout out to everybody that's been hitting me up. A lot of y'all have hit me up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all hit me up, man. People show they self. A lot of people show you who they are in certain situations. So I appreciate everybody that hit me straight up. Thank you. Um. But let's talk about the Cowboys, man. Today, a lot of players, a lot of players came forth and been talking that good stuff. I just want to um, dive into that, man. It's one of those things where it's been a kind of a, a well, not even kind of, like one of the longest weeks in a long time as a Cowboys fan. Um, just a lot of time of self-reflection and, and thoughts and different things. And that's what I want to touch on. I want to go through a lot of our players and what they've been saying to kind of let you know that things is all right. We'll start with um, Tony Pollard. We'll work our way to Tyler Smith, CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott. Um, Tony Pollard just said, guys aren't panicking. Not trying to do too much. Not going haywire and things like that. Locking in and focusing up. Blocking out the distractions and just getting ready for this week. That was the first nugget that came out yesterday. And the thing I like about that is just... You know, it's the first tidbit of like a lot of the media is trying to make it seem like the Cowboys still focused on the Niners. The Cowboys is hurting so bad. There's so many people on the injury report. First of all, a lot of people did not practice just for rest, period, point blank. Um, some people are nicked up, but it ain't as bad as the media want to make it out to be. But I'm liking to hear that we are locked in. We are focused, you know, coming from one of the team's best offensive players, Tony Pollard. I know it's. It's one of those things where people are starting to forget. People are starting to, to not believe because he hasn't had a, a spark in a couple of weeks. But TP is fine. I see TP having a good week this week. It is what it is. Um, I just like to hear when he said guys are not panicking. Now, you can say that's just word service, but I'm going to take my player's word for it. That's what I'm here to do. Um, so that was the first little nugget that, that flew out there. Tyler Smith had a great, great quote. Um about the game and not kind of forgetting what happened. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people want to just ignore what happened and act like, just flush it, act like it didn't happen. And Tyler Smith, I'll, I'll read it verbatim on my, um, I don't think we should forget something like that, the loss to the 49ers. You definitely got to flush it and move on, which is true, but definitely keep that feeling with you. That feeling like what we weren't good enough for. You know what I'm saying? Just the feeling we caught after that game. Um, understand that if you don't operate at the standard that you know you can, you can lose and lose bad. And that's coming from a player that played a phenomenal game. Tyler Smith balled. Everyone else ain't show up with him, but he balled. He threw Fred Warner down the block. Um, I think it's all about moving on to next week, but just carrying that sense of urgency with you. Tyler Smith is playing like an all-pro this year. Not just me saying that because he's playing good. Like, Graded out by PFF wise, one of the best guards in the game, right? And he's becoming a leader. I love what I heard from Tyler Smith. That is dope. Let me move on. I'm going to move on to Mr. Lamb, um, because you know a lot went into this week. Just what went down with CD Lamb, why he was off to the side, why he looked frustrated, etc. And you know people want to cause a rift. They want they're saying for weeks it's been building up. And I understand C.D. Lamb want the ball, man. Period. He want the ball. He want to show what he can do. He wants to help this team. But he did a lot of self-reflecting. Um, he said, absolutely obvious I had time to self-reflect. I mean, I didn't go the best route in, in the end result as far as standing off to the side and not talking to the team. But at the end of the day, I have a job to do. We have a job to do. And I want to contribute to this team. So everything in my power in this week – we can go out there and go forward and get better. It's something else that C.D. Lamb said that I want to touch on um, with Dak Prescott, where he said basically Dak Prescott came to him. It was like, look, man, if you got a problem, 
You need to come to me. Let's hash it out right then and there. Let's not wait. Let's not walk off to the side, even though C.D. Lamb even touched on as well. And I don't got to read that verbatim. You can go and read that on Patrick C. Walker on his Twitter. Um, C.D. Lamb was just saying, man, that's what I do. I'm on, I like to work out by myself. I kind of keep to myself. That's when I self-reflect and just kind of analyze where I'm at. Because I'm an ultimate competitor. I want to win. I want to do whatever it takes to win. But the optics of that look crazy. And Dak said, I don't care if you come over there throwing your hands in my face, barking on me, whatever. This grown man stuff. Let's fix the issue so we can go forward. But they hashed it out on Monday so that we can have a good week of preparation heading into this next game, which is important. That's grown man stuff. Grown man stuff. From Tony Pollard, I'm just loving the variation from the players. We ain't get to talk to everybody. I mean, J. Ron Curse was talking about he knows what, what team. Like, owning the L, as I've said, but understanding not getting down to yourself and like, oh, maybe I'm not that good. Nah, we're good. He said we're a great defense. You know, just like we weren't the best defense when we blew out the Giants, you're not going to crown us the best defense, um, the worst defense when we lose. We know our standard, and we know what we want to play to. So I like just the messaging that's been coming out from all the players, especially with CD, um, saying that him and Dak hashed it out. They know what they got to do. And Dak being the leader that he is, he went to CD. Yo, man, what's up? I don't know how it happened, but I I, 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 I surmised that it was, yo, what's good? Like, like we got a problem? I, and he, I hope he only, I played trash. But let's move forward. We have had weeks where we went off. Like, seriously, went off. Hundreds of yards, you know what I'm saying? To multiple touchdowns. Let's get back to that. We will, we will get, we will earn our right back to, to, to play that team. But right now, we got to focus on the Chargers. Um, and then last but not least, I want to talk about Dak Prescott. Um, Dak had a couple of great quotes today. I'm going to start with this one. Um, talking about this the 49ers lost and but as the leader I, I gotta read this one you can be shaken by that loss to the 49ers you can't um you can't change your preparation as far as putting in that work you can't change everything or anything you've done because that happened bad night bad timing for some turnovers etc you just can't do anything um on offense and at the end of the day it goes into the third downs the third downs were the really manageable and things we've done been the best at in the league so far, which we have had good moments. I don't think we should just rely on getting the third down, but I do think we, we were, were good at converting the third downs. That's my personal opinion. Um, we weren't able to do that. Credit to them. That's why the score looked like that. That's why that game looks like it does. They had a hell of a plan. They challenged us. We didn't respond the right way, and that's why it got ugly. Not going to just say, oh, well, it was all us, like saying – we just didn't ball, and that's why we got blown out. That's a hell of a team we played, and we're going to credit them, but not going to allow it to shake our confidence in who we are. That's a mouthful. Like, saying that you didn't play your game and that's why you got blown out is one thing, but you can't just take all of it on yourself. If we play our game, you act like they don't get better themselves. Like, they're not going to work to get better later in this year, too, when they see us again. Like, they don't expect us to come give us – our best effort out of the last four matchups. They expecting it. They waiting for it. But that's why you got to say, we know you're a good team. And you got to prep as if they got better too, not if they as if they stayed the same. Um, as I said after the game, at this point in week five, they're further along than us. That's a fact. But there's a lot of football left. And we've got to make sure that we're continuing to get better. And that's um, that's been the attitude this week, coming in, practicing, and preparation, and we're going to continue to do that. See, there's a lot of things floating around about, like, all of the Cowboys. Um, like, there's some people saying they're focusing on the Niners too much. They're talking about our preparation. They're talking about the X's and O's, saying our, our, our offense is stagnant and stale. And Mike McCarthy even got a little spicy this morning. I'm going to talk about that this weekend where he was just like, I disagree, you know. I don't want – pride comes before the fall. I don't want our team to be too prideful to realize you can make some changes. But Mike McCarthy is big, humongous on the element of surprise and not showing your hand. So I just want everybody to know everything he tells the media is not always true. Just like this. Mike McCarthy said back in – and if you got to this far in this video, please throw a thumbs up. Let me know that you listened all the way to the nine-minute mark. Mike McCarthy said early in the offseason that he only changed about 30% of the offense is the same. This offense is 100% different, 100% different. 
Meaning that when Mike McCarthy comes out and says, we're going to play to our defense, we're not going to do anything, I feel like he's just lying. I'm not calling it bad. I'm saying he's just, he doesn't want to give too much up to the media, even though you got to talk so much in Dallas. So just realize when they're, when they're saying, like when Dak's saying, you know, we're going to go out there, we're going to just prep, um, do prep and not change anything, I ain't going to front. They probably lying. Dak's lying. Mike's lying. They're making some changes. You would have to be a fool to not see that some things need to be changed to get better at. You know, it's not that you scrap everything. That's true. But some things can be changed to get better at. But I would love to know your thoughts on just some of the messaging that's coming out from our team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really, really think that it was some grown man stuff that happened this week. Self-reflection, self-understanding, knowing that you got to do more to get better. Right? Because we got to go out there and we got a job to do on Monday night. Still got a couple more days of prep. I feel like the players are in the right mindset to bounce back. I'm going to leave you with this nugget for you to leave. Remember, the Cowboys ain't lost two games in a row since 2021. The Chiefs and the Raiders. Remember, CeeDee Lamb was out with a concussion. He missed most of the Chiefs game and the whole next game, and that's when things got weird, trying to force it to Noah Brown. So just realize, for the most part, we, we, we pretty healthy. We got the extra day of prep, probably get Rashawn Evans out there. Everything is not lost. Calm down. It's your boy, Mr. Roman. I'll holler.